Elta Company presents My diabetes is 16 years old, 24, 23, 21, a real problem of the mankind. Diabetes is a serious and a tough diagnosis, real stories. I hear people say, how can you do this? Why would you marry a sick person and take on that responsibility? Four, three, real challenges. I challenge my laziness, my indecisiveness, to be stronger, to be better, to discover something new. Real Victories, a reality project about the lives of people with diabetes. Diet Challenge. Let's go inside. Three experts, nine participants, six months of hard work. I hope many people see this, because our conditions flow is different, but we share common problems. We challenged ourselves, have you? Today is the fifth weekly group meeting with the experts. Group sessions with the project endocrinologist were added to the regular schedule of the diet challenge since this Sunday. As for myself, I definitely understood that group work is very effective when it comes to type 1 diabetes. Anastasia Plishova called on Dina Dominova first to draw a blueprint of how insulin works. Ultra ones and long ones in order to figure out compensation problems together. Okay, let's begin. There are many variations. Let's start with something simple. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. We wake up and our sugar is 5.5. So we assume that everything is okay and we got up with the normal sugar level. So we figure out and count how many bread units we want. We do a bolus going by our coefficient. Wait out the pause that we feel is a must in the morning. 99% of the time you need to keep a pause in the morning because of the constrainular hormones that increase insulin need in the morning. And we eat carbs in the morning. We usually eat carbs in the morning, and even if we don't, the morning pause is the longest for everyone. So we take insulin injection, wait out the pause and eat. 8 in the morning, what do we have to do? Sugar test in an hour. Then what do we have in an hour? Ideally, our range is between 5 and 9 here, yeah? We already discussed today that the norm is no more than 9 because 9 is the renal threshold. If our sugars go above 9, our vascular system suffers greatly. The eyes, kidneys, lower limbs, microvascular first, then macro. What is ideal for us in an hour after mealtime? A maximum level of 9. That's a perfect score. What happens 2 hours after mealtime? Those who use ultra-short insulins. Why 2 hours? Because at 2 hours the effect peaks, we all know this. After 2 hours it returns to its original state, the same as it was when we injected insulin before mealtime. The starting point is when we injected insulin, not the time of the meal, because the pause is different for everyone. For some it is 5 minutes, minus 7 minutes in the morning. It depends on what I eat. If I have oatmeal, then it's 10 minutes. It is very individual. What mistakes can occur here? You eat, keep the pause, check your sugar in an hour, with a reading of 11. What do you do? Nothing. Nothing. We do nothing. We wait another hour and test our sugar level. There is a possibility that it's back to normal at 5.5. So what? What's wrong with this? There must be a longer pause. Exactly. Keep a longer pause. The curve will lower itself and everything will be fine. Let's say after an hour our sugar was 5.5 and an hour later it is 6. What do we do? Nothing. We continue to wait. It is possible that some will feel hypoglycemia before the two-hour mark, yeah? Some will check earlier and see that an hour and a half after an insulin injection, the sugar is four. What does this mean? It means that the dose was too big in the morning and we applied a wrong coefficient. Here we are at 5.5, then it goes there, there, check in an hour, sugar is 10. Wait, 
Check in two hours. Sugar is eight. What does this mean? Not enough? That's right. Now another example. This concerns the ultra-short insulin and food coefficients. But there could be issues with the basal rate. We all know this as well. There, 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 there. Make the check. Let's say the sugar is 8.5 after an hour. That's right. Pick the correct pause. In two hours we check again and it's 5.5. If it drops quickly after the peak, it means our bolus matched correctly with our food. But we have a big basal rate. Or we have a bunch of active one from the last meal. Many of the people here don't eat once every four or five hours. Many of them eat every two or even every hour. Therefore, it happens that we constantly have an active on top of an active. The active chase is active. It's possible if you're perfect at keeping count. And for those who don't count properly, it's just a pipe dream. You'll never adjust the basal rate, nor the coefficients, you'll get nothing Nothing done. Another topic of today's discussion is the protein and fat unit. Last week the participants' homework was to find out how their sugars react to proteins. We open up the Fat Secret app and enter in fried lamb. Enter the weight, this is 322 grams, and the app tells us there are zero carbs in this. But my sugar has risen, it was at 5.2 and went up to 7.9 in an hour. I don't get it. It's really hard. I didn't do any of this before the project. Many of our participants have questions in regards to the proteins and fats compensation. Listen, in these past two weeks that I've been posting what I eat and writing about bread units and protein fat units, I counted 42 people asking me what a protein fat unit was. Two of them asked the same thing twice. People have no idea about this. I also get a lot of questions about that. What's the point of hiding it now? I knew how to compensate that before, I just didn't know the name of it. FP PU is a fat protein unit. One fat protein unit is equivalent to one bread unit and comes out to 100 calories. If we're talking about the first type, about pump therapy, then FPU must be understood and properly counted. I learned to subtract from the general calories. FPU? Yes, I get the FPU, but I don't get how to extend it because we're adjusting my basal rate, I don't get why it spikes. Did you read the article about FPU? Dina, I understand Dasha very well right now. I have the same thing, because I also know how to do it by the book. We discussed this with Anastasia and I extended it, but I still miss. I'm just trying to get the timing and bolus right. Because their basal rate is changing, but even today with three protein units, it's obvious you have to extend. I do it as if it was for one, because I still go into hypo. Maybe you don't need to extend it at all. No, I have to, because if I don't, my sugars shoot up. Let's look at a particular example then. Okay, let's. I'll give you one. Go ahead. Okay, look, uh, let's say I have dinner and I consume 200 grams of turkey, with proteins at 34 and fats at 3. It's very simple from there. We need to understand that one gram of fat is about 9 calories. One gram of protein is 4 calories. Same with one gram of carbohydrates. So it's very easy if you know how many proteins, fats and carbs are in a product. Multiply the carb grams by 4 calories and get some number. Then take that number and subtract it from the overall calorie count of that product. Okay, how much would you extend it by? 208 minus 32. I would extend the turkey by an hour and a half. I think I extended by three, to be honest. Again, we come back to the fact that every organism digests proteins and fats differently. Look, if I went out afterwards, if it were not a dinner on the couch, but a lunch instead, I would not even need a bolus. And I would dial down my temporary basal rate a bit. That's too hard. 
Again, that's just Ola's case. My basal rate is adjusted in a way that I don't need to do any special. Let's talk about how Dmitri makes soup. What kind of meat? What goes into your soup? Help Dima out today. I can't tell you exactly. Dima, there is no such thing as approximately with diabetes. Like, there isn't. It just doesn't work like that. With your approximately, you end up with either a 2 or a 15 sugar reading. Do you want your sugars to be normal? Lose the approximately. Even my mom, who loves to make me soup, I tell her now, wait mom, I can't count that. I tell her either she counts everything that she adds to it and sends it to me, or to just forget it. It's easier for me to do it myself. I must get a hold of myself and make a change. Dasha is amazing. Good on her for watching her sugars. That's awesome. Respect. Love Dasha. She's great. Well, without the support of my family, it would be very difficult. I have Fyodor, that's my small family. I also have my family, my brother, my parents, some friends, but there's not a lot of them. It's been a long road for her, and now she's really working hard, on herself and for herself. If she made up her mind on something, she'll never give up. She's already a winner, but if she was to win this, that would be great. I do like another girl on there as well. She likes Dina. I like her a lot. I only know the trainer. Grab the weights, 20 standing side swings. Repeat again with no break. Five sets of 20-20. I became a lot more disciplined. I don't know, maybe it's my age. I need this project first to prove to myself that a full life is possible. But not the life I lived for 15 years. Dasha was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 13. Friends, school, a ton of plans and a complete denial of her diagnosis. I lived life as if I was healthy. Look at me, how cute I am. And I do sports, and look, I also go out with everybody. It's the typical, why they can and I can't. How am I different from anyone? It's a fairly chronic state of mind. Diabetes is unpredictable, insidious, zero tolerance for negligence, does not forgive indifference. Now Dasha understands that. It's all because of its unpredictability, yeah? It may cause no complications for many years, and there are many cases like this. Then, in a matter of a couple of hours, life changes, because the complications that we're most afraid of show up. I was very lucky that I have both of my legs and I am not blind. And I am lucky because I play sports. If my legs would hurt, I would go for a run. Through the pain and the tears, I would go for a run. Get up in a row and give me five laps. Why do experienced, educated endocrinologists often advise to work out with diabetes? When we're weight training or doing cardio, our muscles begin to consume glucose. And by doing this, we lower the blood sugar. Any kind of physical activity, be it low intensity or high intensity, it still lowers blood sugar levels. Therefore, we can also lower our insulin resistance this way and can achieve a more stabilized sugar level during the day and at night. <laughs> Lastly, we can allow ourselves a bit more food, which has a very positive effect on the overall psycho-emotional state and increased productivity during training. But I did not watch myself, and training without controlling blood sugar levels is very bad. I would have constant hypoglycemia during training. Seven years ago, Dasha realized that something had to change in her relationship with diabetes, when a simple cyst removal operation ended in a heavy ketoacidosis. 
Because I stopped eating completely. Hungry ketoacidosis, when you stop eating. A person with diabetes can't stop eating. I went into the intensive care unit. I seriously didn't recognize my sister. She lost a lot of weight at the time. It's very painful. Your stomach feels on fire on the inside. After that, I knew I wanted to live, and I knew I could do a lot. And I began to work and think. I was very motivated. I wanted a store. I even came up with a name for it. Polka dot underwear. I thought I would sell pajamas, panties, maybe a product line to tie in with diabetes. For example, pajamas with a pocket for the pump, something like a joke, to present diabetes from a lighter side. It would be awesome. Why not? I wanted to show you a t-shirt that I made for myself. All I need is coffee and insulin. It's true. <laughs> Dasha plans to realize her clothing line for people with diabetes in the near future. And simultaneously working on an already established business. I don't like to talk about my business all that much, because I truly believe that no matter what a woman is doing in her life, she should remain the weaker sex. Sometimes even diabetes plays into your hands when you want somebody to sympathize with you, to hold you. Sima? Sima? Who is there? Hey! You come home tired after work, you sit down to relax, and your sugars show up out of nowhere. I don't get it. You counted everything, so where did it come from? And here come the crocodile tears. Why me? Why do I have diabetes? What do I need this for? I could do without counting. But you still get discouraged. You're not made of steel, you know. The new stage of Dasha's relationship with her diabetes was the realization that getting discouraged is not for her. I've been ill the last 16 years. I began to pay attention to myself six months ago. Like, seriously, watching myself. Checking sugars, got a pump. Well, I got the pump first, and then I began to take care of myself. Dasha's next discovery was that she was not alone in her problems, fears and doubts. I didn't know a single person with diabetes before. Instagram helped me a lot. It sounds silly, but it's true. I met a huge amount of people, met girls just like me, who live just like I do. It's impossible to meet up in person. The social networks unite us. On average, there's about 30 to 40,000 people that are registered in some diabetic group online all throughout Russia. It's not just Russia either. There are also neighboring countries as well. When somebody learns something new, he or she will write about it right away. Talk about what worked and what didn't. Or maybe they just share some good news. It's very cool. It's support. The main thing is to know that it is very individual. You should not take to heart what some blogger is saying. You need an individual approach to people with diabetes. That is the most important thing in all of these online communities. You cannot blindly follow what some girl is doing. That will not work. I'm just describing the situation. Each one of my posts is a story. After a person reads this story, they can think and analyze it for themselves. I had a situation with alcohol. I got drunk and confused hypoglycemia for alcohol intoxication. That put me in a coma. I just share my experiences, how it can be sometimes. The sense of community is great. It's sad that there are so many of us with diabetes, but it's good that we stick together. Take him home. You can have him, if you want. Everybody loves my pictures with him on Instagram. My fat so. I feel sorry for him now. I also found out about the project through Instagram. 
that's how Dasha got on the show. Within minutes of meeting the other contestants, a new phase of Dasha's life with diabetes began. She calls it the time of unique opportunities. And we began blah 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 blah. You understand that all the stories are very similar. So similar that you feel like you know the person. Of course, I knew that there would be other contestants just like me, with diabetes. They are so interesting and so much fun. If I met them outside of this, I would never think that they had diabetes. Do a rap, come on, come on, do a rap. We laughed. Ola is a hero. When we were leaving and saying goodbyes after casting, I came up to her and said, you go ahead and have the baby, but don't you think of dropping out of the project? Do you even understand what you'll be able to show people? Address the long-lasting diabetes and pregnancy question. It's simple. Many think that nobody with diabetes has kids. Everyone will probably recognize this one. That's our first meeting at the Diet Challenge. It's like this project is telling me, here, look, Dasha, now you will know everything there is to know. Here's a trainer for you, a psychologist, an endocrinologist. Firstly, I wanted to talk about the main problems that I see on the project right now. And for you to tell me if there's anybody who is tired of counting. Is that a trick question? Yes. Anastasia gave us an assignment to cook complicated dishes. Okay, I'm going to take a photo. Well, uh, dinner, dinner. I will have meatballs, a nectarine, and a tomato. Then write everything down, all the proteins, the fats, the carbs, and the overall calories. Then divide the proteins and all by the number of meatballs. All of this needs to be summed up and shared with the group. They must be counted up in their raw state, so we weigh all the ingredients in their raw form. Then you put them together and weigh each meatball so they're all the same. It makes sense to follow one recipe so you don't constantly repeat the same thing. Roughly speaking, you take two kilos of such and such ground meat, same with rice and so on. And the next time you buy the same thing so you don't have to continuously count it. You do it once and then it becomes easy. We're having guests today and I will be serving them. I decided to make them Caesar salad. When I cook, I calculate all my recipes online on certain websites. For example, I like the Kalorizator website. What will I put in the Caesar? These are eggs. I like to use quail eggs, chicken breast, cheese, tomatoes and lettuce. The sauce is Greek yogurt, mustard and some herbs. If we enter all of this into our app, we get these numbers overall. So, we can see that there are 260 grams of protein, 87 grams of fats, 135 grams of carbohydrates, and 2,400 calories all in. Considering that I will have quite a few people over, I counted about 9 portions. Therefore, if we divide the calories by the number of portions, we end up with 250 calories per person. Guys, now raise your hand if you complete all the assignments and report to the experts. There, somebody thinks highly of themselves. Every day is hard. Sometimes we choose doses with Anastasia, and of course this leads to sugar spikes, you can't get away from it. What is our carb coefficient? My emotions are all over the place. I lose it. I cry to Anastasia. But then you remember of Vasily's Zen techniques. Are you trying to hypnotize me? No, no, no need. You'll hypnotize yourself. I meditate 21 minutes a day. It's very hard. I never thought that sitting down for 20 minutes and letting go of all your thoughts would be this difficult. My thoughts are like this, but now they're nicely organized. Important ones first, then the less important ones. The main thing for me 
As the author of this project is to see results. It's also important to the experts as professionals. When you don't follow their recommendations, we waste both our time and your time. That's why today I will name the person who will be placed on probation for a week. And if he doesn't prove himself, we will be forced to say goodbye to him. I want all of you to become stronger. We are offering partnerships here. This is the format of the challenge. If you're ready, if you think that you're ready, okay, let's go. If you think you're ready, but you're not really ready, that's okay also. The project ended up being harder. This is not a party, guys. Of course it's not a party. That was not the idea. The idea is transformation, so that during these three months you accumulate such baggage with which you can go further yourself. Now I will name the person that will be on probation next week. The person that will be placed on probation is Kirill. Kirill, you have a week to show the experts that you truly need this project. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Dina usually likes to ask questions. I'm staying quiet. You sure? Next time. Okay. This is Daya Challenge. See you in a week. Yeah.